Hello and welcome to the October 26th edition of the weekly community call for chaos. I am Elizabeth Barron, your community manager. So happy to see everybody here. So thanks for joining us. Really appreciate you being here and attending and giving us your attention or, you know, just giving you a place to check your email while you listen in. That's totally fine too. Uh, I will drop the minutes here one last time. If you would like to add your name to the agenda, that would be great or to the list of attendees. Um, that would be great. If not, also valid. So I will share. There we go. Uh, okay, so we had some items from last time that we pushed to this time. So let's go through those really quick. Um, the first one was, there was a note about um, Matt C, if we go down here, it said, uh, Matt C is the sender of things. So that kind of kicked off a little discussion about the um, e-commerce and chaos swag topic. So Kevin was going to look to see if there was a, a way that we could connect Open Collective to our e-commerce platform. So Kevin, do you have an update on that? Totally fine if you do not. Yep. Yeah, and uh, Ray had mentioned that uh, the Linux Foundation has done this before, and he was going to get me a contact person to figure out how they were doing it, uh, because it sounds like the way that they were doing it is very similar to the way that we had contemplated doing it. Uh, and it looks like he has given me the, the person here. It's Brandon Wick. Uh, so I will reach out to that person. However, I uh, I had not reached out to that yet. I don't I don't think he gave me that name in the meeting. Uh, I think he must have put that in after the fact. Do you have that person's email address? I don't. Okay, is Ray on the call? We'll see if I do. Because a name is great, but an email would be better, probably. <laughs> I'm guessing. I should have Brandon's email somewhere. Do you want me to throw it in the Google Doc or just send it over to someone? That would probably be just fine, Ildiko. Yeah, Kevin Lombard's the one who needs it, so. Okay. Thank you. Teamwork makes the dream work. I love it. I am ordering on this while we're talking about swag. I have ordered, I'm ordering more t-shirts. So I'm gonna order a lighter color t-shirt with the black logo. You know how the last one was the white logo. And I'm gonna do a slightly thicker t-shirt. And then I'm also getting coasters chaos coasters, some wooden coasters that have chaos on them. And so Kevin, we might need to coordinate too, like if we are gonna build the store out, like what are the things that we need, like more of the lunch coolers, you know, or the fans, whatever, whatever it might yeah. be. Okay. Okay. Oh, great, I'm happy, Lona. Thanks everyone. <laughs> um, all right, let's go on. I don't think Nicole is on the call. I don't see her. Does anyone see her? No. Okay. Um, I know she is passionate about this, building out the brand kit. So we're consistent with, um, you know, the way things look on Twitter versus LinkedIn versus all the other places. Um, I don't, I know she has thoughts about this, so I don't want to presume to know what those thoughts are. <laughs> so mm -hmm. <laughs> we can just defer this uh, until next time when Nicole is able to join. All right, um, so let's move on to number three, which is the privacy statement in metrics. Um, Lucas, is Lucas on here? I don't see him either. Okay, well, I can share that here's the issue where we're kind of collecting thoughts and um, Lucas was, if we look down here, Lucas was going to start a draft. Um, and I believe that he did that. So we can click on that issue and look. Y'all will see my payment thing again, because I have not updated my credit card and get up. So you're going to see this little thing here. Someday I'll do that. Not today, but um, yeah, so here's the issue. If you would like to um, comment on what Lucas has written here, feel free to do so. 
um, you can just just a, is it like just a general statement for all I see sadly I see that I was pinged here and I didn't respond but uh, um I think it's going to be the uh well there's two things there's one that's going to be like a central document that will have like more details about levels of PII and things like that to give people a little bit more guidance mm -hmm. and then um as we're developing metrics individually um there if we if the group determines that there is potentially some PII or some area of risk or you know data sensitivity then there this is I believe um what he wants to to put in here and this would be a this would be a message that would exist on the metrics document that would basically point to that central document uh, Say that again, Kevin. So we, we had discussed having the central document, mm -hmm. and then uh, for the metrics template itself, we would add a checklist item that would say, uh, basically, is this metric, does this metric have privacy guide, privacy guidance issues? Mm -hmm. uh, and then we would have just a bit of text that we would add to the template, which would be optional, mm -hmm. uh, that would basically say, Hey, this metric has some privacy issues. Please see uh, this central document we've created, and it would link okay. to that. So the only addition to the metrics would be kind of that last sentence that you just said. Yes, and then the and then the guidance for privacy would be in a in a central document. Okay. Um, Are we going to add this statement to the template, like metric template? We should make a note. I think so, just uh, so that people are reminded to consider it when they're yes. developing the metrics. So I believe that's what I just said. It is. Uh, so <laughs> it is, it is but then Vinod <laughs> asked the question, so I repeated <laughs> what you said. <laughs> so it sounds like there's three things that need to be done, Kevin. Then one is to get that central document. I assume it's just in the community repo. Yeah, and I, I think there's a lot of work that needs to be done there. And, and correct yeah. me if I'm wrong, but I, I believe Sophia has expressed some interest in working on that document, and, and Lucas has as well. Okay. And then the second, once that document is done, then the second thing would be adding it to the checklist template thing. Mm -hmm. Add it to the checklist, and then we also add it to the metrics template as an optional, yeah, an okay. optional message that would be under implementation. That would be my third thing. Yep. Okay. So it, it does it does create this situation where every time you're defining a metric, you have to make the decision on whether or not does this does this metric have privacy concerns? Okay. And then you either remove the optional tag or don't include the statement. Okay. Um how can we break could we just break this up into four action or four three action items then so one ai is the actual um pii text document right um in the community repo the second is um the issue template um, issue template update to include check for PII considerations. Is this right so far? Mm -hmm. And then an AI to update the metrics template. Um, not issue template, uh, a checklist. Issue checklist, yeah. yeah. I'll take the metrics template to include um, optional statement. This, the, the optional statement um, in the implementation section.
while Matt's typing, uh, we did talk about the community operations team being involved in this, mm -hmm. but we were not sure where that stood. So if that is not a thing yet, then we can just like share the work across the community to do these three things. But if the operations team was in place, then we thought that might be good, something good for them to work on. Yeah, I think, I mean, I, I think if the operations team is available, that it would be good for a smaller group of people to get started and then maybe share it back. Okay, I mean, I can connect. We have that Slack channel for the operations mm -hmm. team. Yeah. And I can connect with them and kind of point them at this. And I don't know that they necessarily have to write the document, but mm -hmm. to like make sure that the it gets in where it needs to go and things like that. Okay. Uh, one thought slash In, question. Since we're talking about the operations team. Sorry, there, there were three things happening all at once. Uh, I heard someone else talking. They should go first because mine was going to be a side turn. Harry, did you have a comment? Well, yeah, no, I was saying since we're like talking about the operations team, I wanted to like opt to be part of the operations team if that's like okay. Yeah, that is certainly a good thing and a great thing. I will, I'll include you in that. Thanks, Perry. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, thanks. Um, so uh, I, I have a question. Um, so I, you know, I sat in on, on a couple of your meetings and such, and I, I hope to be at the meeting tonight. And then also with some of the other pieces, I was wondering if there's anywhere where we've like outlined kind of where these processes are. Cause I was like kind of following along and kind of seeing, oh, this went here and then this went over here and then this went here. But is there anywhere where we've like kind of written out where each of these things are or anything along those lines that I could read up on? so that I can be more knowledgeable when we're going over things like the privacy statements and the metrics and um, some of those different pieces, because like y'all done such a good job writing up all of these details, but it's like, well, where does this other part um, exist so that I can be a little bit less confused? Yeah, let me, um, so wanna, would it help even just under these, like the B, C and D that we have here to like put links to what these actual things are? Yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> so helpful. All right, I'll, I will. I will do that. Sorry, right. but like last time, I was like, I I, you, you may have noticed I was uncharacteristically quiet, <laughs> <laughs> and that's because I'm like, what? Huh? I don't. Okay, I'm gonna just sit back and watch. I'm gonna no. do that again. <laughs> so quite, thank quite you. well taken. Thank you. <laughs> Appreciate it. On the. The call it to existing assets. I wanted to, in sort of the first one, um, actually outlining sort of the PII designations and potential characteristics. Um, we did some of that in our own privacy statement. So um, that we wrote around the chaos community and our privacy statement around how we handle documentation, or sorry, handle data collection. Um, so I would say that we should either start there or make sure that we update them in tangent or that they cross reference. I would hate to have two different classifications of PII coming from the same community, <laughs> um, just in terms of uh, us following our own descriptions. Um, Cause we did build on say what, say how NIST classifies various levels of PII. Um, those tend to be very corporate centric. So I think it's kind of, the open space here to define is how to provide risk categorization outside of a corporate revenue regulatory structure. Um, and that we're kind of self forming without any of those pre existing things. So I'm also just wanted to bring it up to make sure that we're referencing and building on and updating a tangent versus creating something that's completely separate and somehow might may or may not align with what we've already published. So what, as you're going in here and linking everything, Matt, I would say just put in the privacy statement too that we already have. Will do. I will do <laughs> Thank that. Thank you. Yep. That sounds like we're going to be moving this to the operations. Is that is that a working group that already has a defined meeting? They don't have a, a meeting. So this was this kind of came out of a different discussion with respect to the DEI 
efforts. So like there was the DEI reflection team and the operations that reflection team doesn't necessarily have to do the implementation. And so the operations team would be the team that would help think through how we would implement some of those recommendations. And that kind of led to this whole idea of an operations team um, to kind of help with things that really occur across the entire project. So no meeting yet, still just on Slack. I think we're just trying to get expressed interest in being on the team. Matt, do you see an alignment with what the, that you envision that team working on and this kind of stuff where they wouldn't necessarily write the, the PII document, but they will would be the ones to like update the checklist and update the template? Yeah, definitely. Okay. As this crosses the entire project. Okay. Not to give them more work, but. <laughs> no, and none, none of these are super hard. Yeah. Themselves. Okay, cool. Do we have any other comments or questions about all of this stuff? Um, I guess the like basic question is how do we support it? <laughs> um, so we have a list of things that we want to accomplish. Um, I guess the next steps are where do we start and who do we start with? Are you talking about the like dissemination or, just, or yeah this is sort of there's a lot of work to do here i mean maybe this is a question that we ask when lucas gets back if he wants to be reading it a bit more he might have an idea around how he might want to structure work mm -hmm. around these particular items just so it's we're creating a list of things to do but not assigning them to anyone yet because we don't really have a team or a lead um so it was just more i would love to support it how do we support it Okay, so it looks like Lucas has already done a first pass. Um, so we can use that to start with whoever wants to work on this. Um, looks like it's missing some things. This is obviously just a draft. And that's linked in this issue. Let me link that. It was, yeah, it was in the issue, but it's kind of buried. I'm trying to find it. Oh, I see it. Yeah. It's not showing up as a link. That's the weird part. It just looks like a statement. It doesn't look like a link. Yeah. Let me just drop this in the minutes as well. So I don't know if like he's ready for people to, I mean, he submitted. It doesn't look like it's a pull request yet. No. Okay. So maybe he's st it's still a work in progress from Lucas. We do have, I put in the chat, it was the last chat in there. It's a document. Is that the one you were talking about, Sophia? You see it in the chat? In the chat. Oh, I'm looking in the doc. Okay, I'll put it in the doc too. Um, this was the working doc that we had, which is also a, a good reference point. Because I think we had an actual statement at the end, and I don't that know where it landed. Too. I mean, that's. I thought we maybe we put it in the handbook. We do have it yet to be approved. Me. Here's the chaos data policy yeah where's that it should be in the <laughs> so community many repo. documents <laughs> okay yes. okay but i think but i think so the one you shared that is it's good context because okay. a lot of this brainstorming as a group so even though that the privacy statement which i'm now seeing up on the screen that's the one i was thinking of okay um, but i think it's having the record of where we came from Especially because I'm not sure if Lucas was part of those conversations initially. So I think it's just good record keeping to see all the other ideas, given that various subsets of people are involved in all of the above. So I'd say link them all. I like more resources. 
every time I see this, I get a little pit in my stomach because I'm like, I don't know what to tell people, but yeah. All right. I'll figure it out. If someone has questions about our data. You can just real quickly like mistype your name. <laughs> <laughs> That's a pro strat for a community manager. <laughs> just be like, oh, I don't know why that link is broken. That's weird. Should we turn it into an alias if you don't want it to go? No, no, it's you? totally fine. It's completely fine. I'm just kidding. That is a lot though, because you, you you're just signing yourself up to get the no, no, the I'm awesome. Feedback at passing stuff along to other people. Delegation is fantastic. So yeah, I don't, I, I'm not worried about it. I'm just kidding. Okay, so what is our actual next action item for this? Matt, you're muted. I know I need to finish putting the link in the in this document. <laughs> That's my first okay. item. So you had the one that you were showing on your screen, Elizabeth. Right, right. This thing? No. Yep. yep. Yeah. So can you put that right above C in the minutes? Right above C right here? Yep. Yes. And then I'll put one like to, like this is historical. So this document here let, landed into this, right? Evolved, I should say, into this. Mm -hmm. This evolved into this. Say that again. I was doing something. This thing, correct, right? Evolved into this. Correct. Even though it says draft, it's like pretty good. Right. Correct. Okay. Just making sure I understand that. And I I included the link to our GitHub community repo where our data policy document lives. Perfect. That's a better link. I put it in the chat. Okay. Um, that is. Data policies, yay. So yeah, let's put that here. Oh, oh thanks, Matt. Mm -hmm. I think this all this is all from Salona's comment. Thanks, Salona. <laughs> <laughs> This is great, actually. This is yeah, great. no, it's great. Okay. So are we are we good to move on? What what other loose ends do we have to tie up before we move on? Well, I think this is good because it shows that we have our own statement that Kevin had shared. Our chaos project data policies. And then I guess if we want to collaborate on this thing from Lucas, we should uh, comment on his doc yeah. down here. This would this would essentially, from what I understand, Kevin talking would be an additional document. We have community slash data policies .md, which is the one that we have right. So this is about our data policies. Yes. And then we have we'd have another one called communities, whatever, however we do the folder structure, but community slash data policies for others. Right. So this is about providing guidance. So per, perhaps that perhaps this conversation doesn't belong in community. Perhaps it belongs in metric models. Why? Uh, because the the metrics models group is the is the group that's kind of talking about uh, the the implications for metrics in use. Either either way works. I, I uh, community is fine too, but uh, the discussion could be had in in the metrics models as well. So when you when you start talking about metrics that have privacy considerations, that could be that actually could be. A collection of metrics, uh, and once that collection of metrics is identified, we could provide guidance on, on them. Okay, but either way, it's a. This is about providing guidance, so this is not a. Uh, 
it's not a normal working group issue. I would, uh, I would consider this to be a, a chaos initiative, uh, similar to uh, the way we think of badging as an initiative. Why would it be that big? I mean, wouldn't, isn't this just a single statement document? Well, what's the purpose of the document? Is it to provide guidance on data privacy? Yes, I think so. I think it's, to me, I thought it was more about saying this metric could raise concerns about PII. So you. Why, so the we have that disclaimer okay, in the ahead. metrics. I'm sorry, yeah. go ahead. No, oh, that's good, go ahead. I was, I was just gonna say, so that disclaimer would be in our metrics. However, the document that Lucas is talking about creating is, is guidance on how to use these metrics and how to uh, uh, address the, the privacy issues, I believe. This is confusing because this says this document is to provide guidance to our working groups, but I thought it was guidance to people who are implementing. Yeah, it's people that are implementing. I think that's a typo. Okay. Well, I don't want to assume it's a typo without asking Lucas, but that's what we had talked about before. I mean, I think I feel like we're running into the problem here where it's such a broad issue with different angles that maybe we need a picture. Huh. Uh, a picture would be I mean, helpful. I, well, just, just so we all are sure that we're on the same page. I mean, I think this is a multifaceted discussion with multiple stakeholders to put it all in business ops terms. But it's, I don't know, like I think to do it well, we have to be very explicit about what and how and who um, and here. So I don't know, I feel like that it might be helpful to have some sort of view of what we are explicitly doing and what we're explicitly not doing. Um, so I, before we change Lucas's language, maybe we comment that in as a question, did you mean to write this for working groups or did you mean to write this for metrics implementers? Because um, I think those are potentially valid points, but would have a different focus in terms of recommendation and overview. I mean, we could also say that first we type up something that's for ourselves and once we have something that we agree on, then we can go on and generalize to make it a guidance for others. Because if we don't have anything for ourselves that we, let's say, tried, then I assume it's also hard to give a guidance to others. Well, we, I mean, we do have, we do have our own data policies on how we work with data. Uh, I'm not sure, I'm not sure what guidance to working groups on data privacy would even include, uh, to be honest. Nod, did you have a comment? Yeah. I uh, like uh, whenever this discussion comes up, all these uh, two things always mixed up. So, like we are a policy for ourselves as a community, policy for others as a guidance. So maybe let's have a clear distinction because whenever this discussion arises, it always gets confused in these two aspects. So maybe a clear distinction will be helpful to focus the discussion around. I feel like it would be very helpful if Lucas was here. So um, maybe we should wait until he is able to join or set up like maybe an ad hoc committee to sort all this out. What do you all think? I think I think perhaps so. waiting is a good idea. Yeah, I mean, I think having so it's just sort of a, a session to outline all of this and get on the same page so that folks feel like they can charge ahead and know what, what their bounds are. Honestly, I feel like this is a good start. We have, mm -hmm. all, yeah. we have all documents now in one place, to be honest with you, <laughs> um, which I don't think we had before. And good place to start.
right? Can we just do this with the operations team, perhaps? And this, to me, coordinating this work might be enough. Yeah, I mean, if, yeah. Okay, let's just delete that then. All right, awesome. Cool. Okay, thanks, Matt. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and move forward. Uh, anybody has any final comments on that? Go ahead and drop them in one of the issues somewhere. <laughs> and then it'll get collected. Um, so the next item on our agenda is the chaos con feedback results. And I have Sophia here. Should I click on here? Is this the results? I assume um, it is. I can also just present. Yeah, that's great. Let me do that. Did I pick the right thing? Okay. This is sharing some other random presentation that I have open because I have <laughs> at least three. <laughs> be uh, are you as well? <laughs> are you seeing chaos yeah. feedback summary? Yeah. We're looking at it. Okay. I should know how Zoom works after presenting it all things open last week. Um <laughs> So uh, just let me quickly run through. We ran a quick survey after ChaosCon to get some feedback. Uh, the majority of the people that filled it out were people that attended in person. We had nine respondents, which means I feel like some of you are probably here. So thank you. <laughs> I didn't actually look at who responded. I was trying to respect anonymity here, um, but mostly just want to show a mix of folks that were attending. Um, generally, we had pretty positive ratings. Our weighted Average score was 4.3 satisfaction. So generally people were felt positive about the event. We did ask what were your favorite sessions. We heard pretty much comments about most of them. People liked the incivility session. They loved the lightning talks. They liked the RIT sessions. They especially thought Emmy and Stephen were funny and had a, a good rapport with each other and with the room. So generally I think people liked, liked the content and had sessions that they were like immediately like, yeah, that was great. Um, there was definitely some feedback points that we got around just the logistics and structure of it that could be improved. So I mostly was taking this as a hybrid events are a learning pain for all of us, uh, especially for sort of these smaller satellite events where we can't lean on the aggregate tools that the, the rest of the, the platform, sorry, the, the rest of the conference is using. So um, I really like some of these suggestions that I'm looking at as how to run a multi-channel event. Um, so generally we could have had better and more frequent communication on more channels, um, especially because we kind of changed the, the schedule a little bit last minute too. So kind of having more, more of that upfront and center and increasingly promoting that, um, increasing promotional live stream during the event for folks that might have joined later on, um, making it easier to find things both in the room and in the Slack channel. Um, more specifically, I liked that there were some feedback points that we should have had more breaks, which I agree is the person who made the schedule. I was kind of under the objective of trying to squeeze as many things in there as possible, but I think that meant that we lost some of the in-between connection and discussion and sort of the hallway track, for lack of a better term, because it has a very specific meaning, but just kind of the in-between space, there was more desire to have more of that space. Um, and then I know this came up in the room as well. We were talking about shortening virtual talks and I, I liked this recommendation. So I service it to the top and um, maybe keeping those shorter versus the in-person ones where it's easier to stay engaged and to stay interactive with the presenter. Um, and then just a call for more interactive sessions. Um, we had discussed this up front in ChaosCon planning and opted not to given the short short duration of the schedule. Um, yeah. But we were thinking about having more of like round tables and discussions and more of a workshop setting. Um, and we did get some feedback that that would have been, that would have been a great add on. So I guess maybe uh, for future events, if we have, a, I would think it a little bit more time just because I feel like those, I, I don't want to have a rushed experience in that kind of thing, but definitely the feedback that folks did want to have more discussion and interaction. Yeah, um, I, would, and then I some, would just, yeah. I would just say that with a half day, it's, it's sort of a, it's a paradox. Yes, yeah, <laughs> like that. But how would we do that with a half a day? Yeah. Well, I mean, I think it kind of the takeaway was folks mm -hmm. love the lightning talks. Folks love the short talks. That mm -hmm. maybe maybe twenty minutes is too long. Maybe we only save that for sort of our our keynote like longer topics. But that we try to keep things shorter. I think so, that's a good idea. Um, not to say, I don't know if anyone has run an event where every talk is seven minutes, that would be kind of a wild concept. <laughs> um, but I, I like, I like the idea, especially with these sort of shorter 
sort of event. So playing a little bit more with the session like the format. Um, and then just some specific call outs for types of roles that folks thought could benefit, we could have benefited from having someone who's more dedicated to our social media channels or to Slack um, to ensure that um, people are staying engaged and active and connecting the dots uh, where people are always present in all places. Um, I, I like that the Ted max um, Ted does max out at 20 minutes. So we, we did that as well. Our keynote was 35, uh, but everything else was max 20. Um, most people would recommend it. So yay, um, it's just the same score distribution as the overall satisfaction score. Um, and then I last thing I wanted to point out there is that we had made up front that we wanted to do some sort of re airing of the of talks that were popular or maybe an opportunity to have an end up QA with panelists or speakers. Um, I know, Matt, we had cut your session, um, so I wanted to give you space to do that. Um, and I wanted to kind of put it out there for discussion. I, I have a strong opinion here that I marked so that everyone could see. <laughs> um, but just the thought that like we has an organization have also has satellite events around FOSDEM, which isn't happening this year, it's only virtual. So I thought it could be a fun time to have our virtual only one around it. So it's sort of like a satellite event of FOSDEM again. Um, and that would also give us a couple of months to get things together, even though nothing would be new, it would just be an opportunity to reconnect and to discuss further. I like, yeah, FOSDEM seems to make sense. When in January is it, I assume, later in the month? I feel like it's always like the second or third week. Okay. I'll, I'll look it up. But yeah, I think that sounds great. Sophia, would you mind linking a copy of your presentation in? There's an issue in the community repo around gathering feedback for when we start to plan the next chaos con. And this is oh. extremely helpful. Um, let me find that issue. I'll drop it in the minutes. Yeah, the link is in the, the notes, but I'm happy to put it in the Oh, perfect. It's I can get it. It's cool as well. I got it. I got okay. it then. It's all good. I think I have to grant access because it's a slide, but just ask. Okay. Or I could like screenshot some of it or something like that. Like mostly I'm just uh, curious about the, um, the recommendations of like the specific, mm -hmm. like those two slides that have those specific things called out. So that gotcha. when we go next time we remember that. Oh, FOSM is actually in February. Online, five and six, February, 2022. Okay. So still, it was the end of January, got pushed into February. That still seems okay <laughs> to me. I thought so. Yeah. yeah. So I don't, I don't want to, we don't have to put in the books yet. I think we still have a little bit of time to decide as a community, but I thought it might be nice to plan to do something around FOSM that could highlight some of our talks and make space for more speakers. Agreed. That's that's already down in the new items. Whoever's typing in the, oh, never mind. Uh, and I'm happy to put myself on the hook to, to help support it, given that I was involved in the last one and have a lot of the pieces. And this is, I feel like the part two of the last one, so. Well, I think you'll have the same support group again. So <laughs> no problem there. Thanks for doing all that work, Sophia. That was a lot of work, I know, but appreciate you doing that very much. Any other questions, comments? We got about five minutes left and we do have a couple of new items to talk about. No, thanks, Sophia. Mm -hmm. OK, um, so the next thing on our agenda is this um, concept of adding another person to action items as we assign them, which we absolutely did not do up here, but that's OK. <laughs> um, I don't know, Matt, if you want to talk about this. I can if you don't. Um, go ahead. I mean, really, that's all that it is. We were talking in the DEI working group about um, adding on um, a newcomer to help uh, with onboarding um, 
and just integrating people better into the community and giving them something to do instead of just like leaving it so open of you know whatever you want to do here we are it's very like ambiguous and kind of fluid which is okay but not maybe the best so um <clears throat> we thought that in the working groups if there are action items and there are new people around include them to partner with someone who's been in the community for a while um would be a good way to onboard them and to, to integrate them any other Absolutely, comments yeah. on that the other comment was for those of us that have been in the project for a while, like asking people to do mentorship can be a, a big ask sometimes, like the concept of mentorship. So like if I, I don't know, if I look at Ildico or Sophia, right, to say like, would you be willing to mentor a newcomer? That's a big, that's a big ask, right, to mentor into the community. Um, and assigning with an action item could be a lower overhead way, and it's like time boxed. You know, it has a, it's a very particular thing um, that a couple people would be working together for just a short period of time. This so would be somebody experienced and a newcomer in the community. Sean, did you have a comment too? No, I was just ag agreeing that that it's a lot to ask that you're talking at least an hour a week if you really want to take on mentoring somebody with any, you know, doing it well. Yeah, and to Salona's point, like clear things to do do make it easier. And an action item is a clear thing to do. It's it's something to do by the next meeting and or two meetings out. So that's good. So the, the request is for all working groups just to think about this when you're doing it, whether it's the risk working group or the evolution working group. Uh, if you have newcomers or new participants and you're doing action items, just to think about asking them to participate or to be included if they'd like. Yeah, they obviously don't have to, <laughs> but we should extend the invitation nevertheless to make it explicit. All right, um, we only have a couple minutes, so but I know we want to uh, talk about the contributor list is the next thing on the agenda. Um, I'm going to maybe suggest that we all think about this between now and next week, um, because maintaining contributor lists is getting really tricky to do as people come and go and we want to make it opt in, but how do we handle like old metrics and things like that. And I know uh, this actually came from from um, some concerns that Kevin had while doing this, um, the latest release. So Kevin, I don't know if you have anything to add real quick to that. Uh... Just that the, the the current list we have, I don't think it's it's fully up to date. I think we're missing out on people, uh, and it's it's really just a it's a list in Markdown currently. Uh, so it's a it's a list Georg and I have kind of compiled, uh, and then to your point, you know, we'd we'd like it to be opt in. Uh, we there, I think there are considerations for how we collect and store the data for the discussion we had earlier uh, and then how we how we uh, how we share who who's on the contributor list as well so uh, I think there are a lot of I think there are some some data privacy issues and then there's also just some logistics so uh, on how we can how we can better save and re uh, save the data and recognize our contributors so Yeah, and to be clear, um, Kevin, are you talking mostly about the con contributor lists within the metrics or the overall big list that we po will post on the website? So the, the overall big list that we post on the website is also the list that we put into our metrics release. Um, okay. So it, it is the, uh, I think it's the second to last page or it might be the last page uh, in on the PDF. So uh, as far as collecting the contributors for each individual metric, uh, I think we have that down. Uh, and that is that is purely opt in. And that is if you work on creating the metric, you just add your name to the bottom of the metric. Uh, when we're 
when we're building it or when you do a, a pull request on the uh, on the item or on the on the metric. Uh, so I am I am talking about the overall contributors list. So this is everyone who has contributed to chaos in any way whatsoever. Uh, and we have been we have been including that list on the metrics release, as I said, on the I think it's the second to last page. And it is really just a it's just a list of a bunch of people. I have a question, which isn't the best way to answer a question, um, but the the who contributes where metrics group that came up with the various views of different types of contribution. Um, I'd be curious to get their thoughts on how to organize that because I know having just a list of contributors might not necessarily be as descriptive as you want it to be, but just who was involved and who wasn't involved versus actually providing more description over time, role, function, contribution, type, and impact. Um, if we do want to get more specific in terms of how people contribute and the amount of time they contribute. Um, I'm not sure, Emily Brown, but I feel like that's a good question as well, because then we get aligned with that <laughs> uh, in terms of saying I contributed in, in this way and then having a, a space for that. Yeah, and I was just going back to the previous discussion as well. Um, during ATO, there was a lot of presentations that covered um, people who are coming onto the project who know about open source in general and aren't familiar with the ways that they can contribute. So having a document for each of the projects or um, each like you know each of the initiatives could really help. So when I joined badging, I can look at the different ways we're looking to structure badging, whether it's the documentation or the outreach program and how exactly I can contribute. I think those would be perfect for newcomers. That's really, that's a really great suggestion and mm -hmm. love that context around the other benefits that it provides besides recognition, but it's also a signal to newcomers of what they can do. Um, sadly, we are out of time. We're actually over time. So let's continue this next week, uh, if that's okay with everybody. Um, also, just so just to bring attention to it, all the chaos metrics have been translated to Chinese. So thank you, thank you, thank you to our Chinese community for being so very awesome and dedicated and devoted to chaos and keeping it up to date. We really appreciate you all. Um, I think that's it for now. Uh, everybody have a great rest of your week. And anything we didn't get to talk about, just add it to the agenda for next week. We'll, we'll make sure to put it at the top. So thanks, everyone. Take care of yourselves. See you all later. See ya.